Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number seven of the DMC podcast with your loyal, committed, and legendary hosts, myself, Cody Hunter, and of course, the man, Adam Rigby. How are you doing, my bro? What's up, mate? What's up? Hey, everybody. How you doing, mate? Oh, first, man, we're going to pump the brakes a little Ooh, before we... Right. Before we get hype, before we get hype, just want to pump the brakes. And a little reminder for everybody: we're getting some great views, we're getting some awesome feedback. And what we would love you guys to do is hit the subscribe button, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Spotify, now on Apple Podcasts as well, which is sick. Every avenue that you can find a podcast, you will find us. If you could subscribe, it would mean a huge amount to us. All you have to do is push a button. So Cody and I are just going to wait for a second. Just wait, mate. Yep. Do it now. Do it right now, everybody. Turn that writing from red to not red. Have right? you done That's that yet? what happens on subscribe. Yeah. No? Have you done that yet? Have you done it yet? How about now? Do it. Okay, I think, mate, I'm pretty sure we just went up like 30%. Which is bro. probably enough to get your shirt off, mate, to be honest. We're getting close, bro. We're getting close. And we're back. So thank you, team. Uh, amazing, again, to get the support. If you can subscribe, it mean a huge amount to us. Let us know we're on the right track. We're getting some cool messages through, hey, bro, and um, lots of stuff for us to chat about and work on. And that's what it's all about. Us having a combo going deep. Mate, it's been real good. And like I said, a lot of people have been sort of coming up and it sounds like people are almost treating it like a series, eh? And, and the shows and the views of like episode one are sort of showing that, that uh, I spoke to someone at the gym the other day and she'd said that, oh, I'm up to number, I'm up to number five. You know, I'm still one behind. And I was like, awesome. You know, that's quite, it's quite cool that people are going back and just flowing through them all trying to catch up onto the most current episodes. So oh, that's awesome, man. Eh? Yeah, and we need that. We, we want that library for people to refer to. Mm -hmm. So remember... Let's not stop at episode one because episode one was us just checking in. That was the first one, you know, and, it, and it's raw and it's rough and that's what we love about it. And it's progression for us in a conversation. It was just an introduction. And the good little thing is the headers, I, I feel, is that if you feel as though you want to work on a specific thing or you're having trouble with a specific thing, you can just go back to the video log and you can go in mm. and say, okay, mate, okay, well, well, this is about, I'm fearful about a couple of things. I want to check in with the guys and, and remind myself about that conversation that they had about fear. There was a couple of gems mm. in there. Mm. I'm going to deep dive in. So you don't even have to listen to it once. You can go twice. You can go three times like a good read. It's of benefit yeah. if it doesn't sink in the first time. Um, if you're mm. out for a walk and get distracted, then make sure you tune in because, you know, I think there's a, there's a habit if you're listening to stuff in it and for, for a lot of people, you know, we're walking around in our own big bubbles and if it's not about us and we feel as though it's not directly related to us, you kind of close off. But what you've got to realize is let's get through that, that part of the conversation. It's where, where we need to live. It's where we need to learn. And then all of a sudden we come to this intersection and you go, shit, that's me. That's 100% me. That's why I'm in. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm here invested in this conversation. That's the part that I listen to, it might be a 30 second little anecdote, might be a little story, might be a, um, a little game changer for you. And then same sort of ideal, listen, and then something will catch your eye that, that the little hook will grab and you're reel in the big fish, which is that life changing little moment that we live for, that we love. And that's what this is all about. Yeah, big Jets. time, bro. Um, mining, and be eh? sure. Like mining, mate. It's, well, it is mining, eh? and, and it can't all, it won't all just be related, but again, Mine it out. And again, please, team, don't forget the Instagram page is up and live and we've shown up with our weekly podcast and now we're showing up with daily DMCs and we are, <laughs> we've been showing up. We've done every day and this is a type, this is a bit of a challenge to ourselves, for you guys. Um, and it's not necessarily easy. Some days it's tough uh, and you'll see, you'll be able to see with uh, the sort of times of days and, and trying to find the time or remember what we want to talk about or just lots of different aspects, aspects come into it. But we're really excited to be able to share those little gems, little gems. And one day, it may be the exact one you want to listen to. So please go to the Instagram account, give that bad boy a follow and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on them. Every single day, a little taste of the Daily DMZ. And it's going to be real, eh? And, and that, the thing I love about that is it is raw. Like la last night, so I was late on mine and I know you were kind of like, shit, mate, has he forgotten? It's just going to happen. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it was, going to, it was always going to happen, mate. It was always going to happen. But 
I thought, you know, I had something lined up for the morning. I thought, that's cool, but what if I get through my day with this philosophy and I try and make that work and I apply it and see how that rings? So I took it through right through and I did a couple of classes and I, by the time I got through my classes, shout up and, um, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, did what I need to do. I was tapped. <laughs> I had very little sugar in the brain and I needed just a little bit of a carb up, a little bit of fuel and some hydration. And then my mind ticked over and I'm like, yep, we're back. So I walked out and had a chat and asked, well, I, I don't know why I was whispering. <laughs> And the lights are out there because we're all in bed, mate. Everyone was in bed when yeah. you posted. That's why I was like, Hello. Yeah, yeah, I know it's <laughs> late. I know it's late, peeps. It's 8 30 at night. Sorry, sorry. I'm really sorry for this. Uh, <gasps> but it's another, but again, another good, a, a great lesson from the, from this, say, is like the um, that whole base off the atomic habits. Remember the whole um, the whole habit stacking, eh? You almost need to, and that's why I've been doing some afternoon runs and I'm trying to, trying to post or record a video afterwards. So I know that I'm gonna finish it, I'm gonna feel good. And I know that if I do the whole, yeah, if I, if I pause, take a shower, hang with the kids, relax, then I'm gonna to have to peel myself off, this, off the sofa and be like, shit, now I've got to do this video. Like it's almost as where, or even the drive home from the gym in the morning, eh? It's like finding some chance where you know you're gonna be onto it, you're gonna be good. But if the material is not there, if you haven't been inspired yet, you've just got to wait till it comes. And um, yeah, but it's just a good learning for us. Eh? I'm, re I'm really enjoying the daily DMCs. I think uh, I've had some good feedback from those as well. Yeah, awesome. It is, it is, I do, like a, we talked about it before, I do find it, I do find it challenging because it can be quite confronting because, you know, you carry your own personal little motivators around and to be able to open up and share those has been a big thing mm. um, for me in terms of outwardly expressing that to the peeps. So I just want to capture those moments even if I'm not feeling it how do I get myself out of this hole or because every day is not a not an on day I think mm. today's a great example you know you called and said how's it going mate? I have been deep and I, I, I walked in today with a with a plan to do a couple of things and some of it was around exercise I wanted to get back in the pool had a great swim this week man it was amazing and I want to talk a little bit about that later on but I wanted to get back in the pool to keep up that consistency um uh, that that habit because I've just rediscovered my passion for it and it didn't work out it just didn't work out for me because there was a lot of stuff that was that was happening and while we were talking you could hear the concrete saw and drill going on in the background we've got <laughs> builders on site smashing rocks for <laughs> smashing rocks for the big part of the morning so all of these things were conspiring but it's just me having the ability to know okay I know my plan b one thousand percent i'm still going to train today and it may not be swimming i will re-engineer to redo that but as i get back into the process of of training i will become better at knowing when my sweet spot is you know and it might be the little lunch times but i'll tell you what if i have to get up at four o'clock in the morning to get that training session done because i love it so much and it becomes such a part of what i do and it's getting me closer to my goal then man i'm going to do it but I'm going to, I'm figuring that out, you know, I'm figuring out that routine that works for me and works for everybody around me. Cause I don't just want to, you know, if, if um, my family gets home and I'm like, okay, good to see you. Hi, how are you? I'm out and disappear for two hours. Mm -hmm. That's the tough thing, getting the mix right, making sure, making sure it all works. And the same with the podcast, you know, making us making time for getting ready for, to get jumped on, pounced on by family, et cetera. Yep. And um, so the plan things. B. Yeah, the plan, and like you said, it's that whole going back to setting yourself up for success. Hey, eh? you don't make it, you don't plan things for unreasonable times or overcommit yourself to things that will, you know, potentially won't happen. Um, you know, you talked about in the daily DMC. Was that last night you talked about that? Like before you start it, you you revisit. You know, am I going to do this yeah. or will I? Yeah. yeah, you know that whole. You've got to make sure that whatever you're committing to, you can actually achieve it. Like, oh, I'm going to train twice a day for the next, for every day for the next six months. I mean really are you able to actually do that like don't i always think when i work with a client i hate the idea of taking things off them because they haven't achieved what we've set out to achieve i always want to build on a day so week number one i need you for two days in the gym that's it two days can you do it 100 percent, yes good show me for four weeks four weeks goes past two days are done maybe there's even a three in there occasionally nice job my man or my girl you've now graduated to three days and, you know, so you build on it, whereas a lot of programs will start you off with like five, six days a week. And by week three, you've realized I can't do these. And what happens? Game over. You shift out, you drop out, you stop, you don't like it, you feel like a loser. 
you know, you feel like you failed. Um, yeah. So we've got to set ourselves up for success. And we knew one day a week for our podcast, for example, we can hammer that. We can do it. We, can, we know we can do it. No reason to quit on that early. Um, and just set yourself up for success. It's something that we all need to do a lot more with a lot of things that we're into. Yeah, because we come in like, the, you know, the, you've got the big, hairy, audacious goal or the dream and come in and hot. You're not going to get it in a week. No. You know, so you if you're always, you're setting yourself up for failure if you're going to compare yourself every week to my big, hairy, audacious goal. So you break it down. And the swim was actually a really good example for me. I was I was thinking about that. And a couple of couple of things, like I thought, how what's my process to deal with the challenge of getting in the pool? What are the objections? Well, stuff all my I'm going to make time to do it anyway. Get down the pool. I've got my trip ticket, ten trip ticket now. I take my togs and towel everywhere with me. So if I've got a spare moment, if I've got lunch, if I'm close to the pool, if I know it's going to be my swim, again, figuring out the process of whether I need to start doing that in the morning or or in, in the evenings. But um, I got in the pool and, and and for me at the moment, it's about, look, if I can get a couple of Ks done, 80, 80 laps of the pool, I think I'm doing all right. But it's still a long time and it's it's that boredom, you know, it's that monotony that training has. That's the hard stuff to get over. It's not always exciting and it's not always about adrenaline. It's about dealing with that line. You know, it's about dealing with that continuation of picking the bar up, putting the bar down. It's a continuation of the one foot step in front of the other. That's the boring stuff. That's the mahi. That's the work. That's the grind. And I'm like, how am I am I going to deal with it? And um, you know, a guy that we listen to, Eric the Preacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we know him well. And you know him for the if you want to uh, succeed as much as you want to breathe. Quote. Oh yeah, he's awesome. And I talk I talk to it a lot, but. You know, and one thing that came out of one of the recent ones was if you're thinking about quitting, why did you even start? Mm -hmm. And it can be confronting until you start to re-engineer it. And what that took me back to was the reason, the why, that why I why I was fronting up to get in the pool. And I'm like, I just love it. I love the feeling. I love the challenge. It's confronting what was an actual fear before I unpacked it. You know, it's it's conquering. Mm. And it's empowering for me to be able to get in the pool and to do that, to complete that. And then 80 laps seems like a lot. When I, when I got into it, you know, you count. Mm. And I had my watch on. But I thought, for me, I'm going to leave the watch behind. I'm not going to rely on the watch to count. I'm going to take that responsibility myself. And I also felt, you know, with when you, when you start to time stuff, when you put a time stamp on stuff, there's always comparison whether it's with other people or with the way you used to train. And I felt, man, you know, are we setting, setting ourselves up for failure by all of this time completion? Because we all analyze the data. Hmm. And I look at it and go, God, I'm only swimming that fast when I used to swim this fast failure. Hmm. And I'm kind of like, bro, you're missing the point. It's about yeah. getting in the pool, again, connecting to the why, doing what you love. And again, if, you, if you're thinking about, quitting why 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 did you even start i mean again conquering the challenge loving it so i said i'm going to do 80 laps what i'm going to do is i'm going to break it down i'm going to count tens and that's all i'm going to do mm. and interim i'm like oh you know what if i if i start to feel tired am i going to stop again if you're thinking about quitting why are you even starting so i started with the first 10 and before you know it the rhythm was there it felt amazing i just felt great I felt liberated. I felt free of restraint. I felt that I had no timer. I knew that I was, I had clarity. All I was there to do was enjoy the experience, the moment and swim. And I whacked out, jumped out and mate, to be honest, I could have kept going. Mm. I could have kept going. I could have counted to 10 and continued to count to 10. And I may have, may have run out of steam eventually, but man, it mm. felt amazing. And I jumped out of the pool and I had a quick glance at the, at the clock. I had no, real comparison of what time I jumped in versus what time I jumped out. I knew it would take, you know, um, let's say 40 minutes, for, for example, for me to get changed, get in the pool, um, do some laps. There was no breaks, just counted to 10 and then repeat. So there was no stops in between. Did the 80 lengths, did the 80 laps, had a shower, felt amazing, incredible. But again, it's breaking down that big goal 
you know, taking away the restraints like that timing, not setting myself up for disappointment, appreciating why I was there, what I was there to achieve. It was about the swim, the experience, the reconnection with the water, the learning, the mahi, the grind, the boredom, and um, and smashed it out, broke it into those small chips, you know, those small chunks. So that's why we need those small term wins, those little wins on on the way, the little goals that we kick before we get to the big match, you know the little footsteps before we take the strides, the walk to the start line before we start the race. Mm. Um, all of those types of things, mate. I, and yeah, far out of that. And that's why I'm like, shit, I want to get in the pool. So I was buzzing. And, I love it. and it didn't quite work out. So I was kind of like, okay, no, that's okay. Mm. That's mm. all right. There's a, there are things going on that are way more important and yeah. I will do it. My commitment is to swim two minimum times a week at the moment to yeah. three maximum mm. and hopefully include some of the family members and, and with the experience there but I, that I, is it that's my commitment it's so good and i think again seeing yourself up as a success and that whole comparison thing is really important where i think the only thing and i and we talk about at the end of a lot of workouts when i'm coaching large groups is like you, and we've talked about it in the past is it, it comes really just down to effort we need to judge yourself on in today's session is not how how good you are today compared to yesterday or the day before or your training partner like, number one, have you done your best? Have you given 100% effort or whatever the effort may be? Because it's not always intense. Again, like you said with the swim, some workouts are designed not to be done at a million miles per hour. Um, so yep. I'll program workouts where I'm like, I want you to complete this 30-minute workout at a sustainable pace, which means cruise through it. Just go loop through. But again, the end of that workout, only you know, hey, did I do my best today? Did I do my best with how I feel, how I slept, how I ate? We go over it all over again. But the thing is, it's just so important to not to not be trying to compare what I lifted yesterday to what I lifted today. If last night I had one hour sleep and had a, I don't know, a newborn baby screaming in my ear the whole night, you know, like, or I didn't eat well, or uh, I tweaked my back or whatever it is. And I'm like, oh, why am I did lifting 400 pounds today? You know, this is shit. It's like, well, mate, have you done your best today with what you got? Yes or no? You know, I love those yeah. questions. I love a good clear cut yes or no answer. I don't really want it. Like, did you train today? Uh, no, I don't, no, I don't care. Was it a yes or a no? Like, it doesn't matter. Make yeah. it real simple. Clean and cl clear. Um, you don't have to make it all confusing and make up excuses or whatnot. Did you give 100% effort? Nine times out of 10, getting there was your main effort. And during the workout, we always think at the end day. There's not very often you're like, shit, I gave that 100. You know, I know that we want to say we do every workout. But we always know there's a little bit more we can push there. We always know. I mean, today, did I give 100% effort yeah. in my workout? No. But I did my best with what I had and how I felt. I probably could have pushed harder, but there was no real reason to do so. It was just getting the workout done. So um, I love yeah, it. Yeah, as it. we said, hey, it's not always pretty, mate. It's not always glamorous. It's not always rock star yeah. Instagram life. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> right. it is shit sometimes it is tough but that but but those moments you know sometimes though they, they will generally all the time you know you don't, you don't go through the process of, of of getting through a workout or doing something that you truly love and feeling bad about it shit, no. you know it's, it's kind of that moment where the world stands still and you separate everything and i, I you know I, I always view it like uh, getting on a plane check your baggage at the door close the door nothing outside can harm you focus on what's inside the door's closed just get it done and that comparison is really interesting. When you go in an environment where you, whether if you, look, if you're going for a walk, if you're going for a run outside, or if you're on a bike ride and someone passes you a million miles an hour, who gives a shit? That's them, that's not you. Mm. Don't feel as like, oh, am I, you know, oh God, I'm going too slow or, or that person's way better or way faster than me. You don't know what they're up to. They might've just done 500 meters or a K. The pool was a classic example. You know, I'm going down there lapping out. Uh, you know, I'd got 350 or 60, a couple of people jumped in the lane. We're doing one length and resting for five minutes doing it super quick so why would i let that bother me or distract distract me that's them that might be something they were wanting to achieve that might be how they process or get closer to their goals no. don't let it affect you it's what you are up to if you know in your heart what you're going to achieve and I, I like the thing like so when i was into the conditioning programs for me is all about okay maximizing bang for buck minimizing rest getting in getting it done, getting out. None of this scroll through the phone, none of this mm. figuring out what weights to do. I know what weights I need. I know what workout I'm doing. I've already got a mind when I'm working through what my next workout is gonna be. And that's part of my recovery. So I'm like, okay, I finished a super set. 
I know that I'm going to put the weights away and I'm going to go over and I'll chuck over because I've already got my sights on the next bar that I need to do and so on. So my movement is right through the workout. It's not, oh, thank goodness, just mm. sit here and wait for a minute, five minutes. Oh, then I'll go up, then I'll grab that weight. So you just got to keep, you know, you've got to have momentum. You've got to realize what you're there for, what you're, what you're there to achieve and just getting it done. We talk about it all the time, just getting it done, mm. eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right, mate. Hey, um, Glorious. So, so after last week, just what I remember, yeah. so after last week, we had a lot of, you know, we talked about fear. We talked a lot about fear. Um, and if those of you that watched the video all the way through will remember that our man here did a little, he got a little close-up and then we lost him. And then I was like, <laughs> a, I was like a oh. dead headlight. So I'm holding shit on by myself. And uh, it was a very funny end to the podcast sorry Pete. um no, I, it was I so it was so good it was so good <laughs> um but the thing was there there was actually a couple of things that you know that we hadn't have just discussed actually i know that you wanted to talk about one or two things um and carry on from that and we actually almost put together another little midweek podcast but again yeah we're probably yeah. probably still with once a week we, we probably struggled a little bit to get another session in just yet um but bro like like let's Maybe we revisit a bit more on the old fear, um, the fear subject while we're, while we're um, you know, on today's podcast. Yeah, valid, mate. And, I'll, and you know, it wasn't kind of a mic drop for me. It was just a battery show. I looked at it and thought, oh, yeah, but I, I could see my, my um, laptop was plugged in, but I just didn't pay attention to the battery thing. It wasn't actually working. And so, yeah, it just went black ops. <laughs> and so Cody good. handled that like an absolute, <laughs> absolute trooper, bro. Thank you. Thank you for covering me there. So apologies, Pete, for disappearing, doing the rock star mic drop. Boo, I'm out. It oh, wasn't okay. like that at all. So apologies. No. But yeah, um, you know, we talk about the can of worms, but man, it was, yeah, you're going through that. And I, what I didn't want people to think as oh you know i'm not a i'm not afraid of anything i still carry fear with me fear we talk about it fears daily fate is a daily thing fear is important you know it's instinctive it's natural we're going to be afraid of things it's that energy it's it's perking up being aware of of the, uh, the environment things around you that could be a danger of hazard but it can also be a massive handbrake and stop you doing the things things that you love but what i was trying to articulate more the, that my my process for handling fear is way different so i'm not fearful of the process of fear itself you know and middleton talks about the fear bubble how he can step in and step out of it mm. um you know it's a physical thing for him and he feels it so he goes through the analysis of of if you don't know Ant middleton um ex, ex special forces soldier uh sas who dares wins probably most people know him um mm. for that but the fear bubbly talks about it's a physical barrier that he knows when he's not in danger versus when he is in danger does he need to be fearful in that moment and it's the same thing like i you know we'll redress it i pack it is it logical is it is it illog- illogical um and you know i, I we talk about small things to be fear of and we were joking about um sharks and lions but uh one thing i one th- one thing that you i used to be fearful of and i, I don't know whether you come across it, mate, is um you know obviously it's as the world advances there's a whole lot of shit going on the elections were going on covid's going on and the fear is that what type of world are our kids going to grow up into mm-hmm. you know and the reality is that we we can't really control that mm. At the end of the day, circle of influence, circle of concern, we can't really control that. But what I do know is that I've brought two absolutely stunning humans into the world. And it's been my job to make sure that they are capable of dealing with whatever life throws at them. And obviously, we've still got work to do. We're all a work in progress. But I feel as though, in terms of where I'm at from a parent, my kids know right from wrong. You know, we've given them responsibility and accountability. We've given them the license and leverage to learn from their mistakes. We've given them support where they need to, and we've given them hard chats when we need to do that. So in terms of that fear, I can't control what the world is going to be, but what I can do is control how I prepare my loved ones to deal to deal with it. So the fear was broken down for me, and I felt really good because I've got a couple of really cool super cool amazing um young woman that i'm fortunate to call my daughters and share my life with with my lovely wife um and 
And of course, moving, moving past that, um, we talk about the fear of death. Mm. You know, death is the, the, the greatest teacher of all. Let death be thy teacher. Mm. And we don't know until we get, get to that point what it's going to be like. You know, it's, it's not the end of this life. It's just the start of another. I think we went through that before. And I like the, like the theory behind it. It's just the start of something. Mm. Nobody really knows what it's about. And sure, there was a lot of fear for me, um, I guess, until I witnessed it firsthand, till I, till I held death by the hand, you know, and I watched it mm. enter and leave, leave the room. And that's dark, mm. far out, that's dark, and that's deep. But I have experienced it. And it's not cool. Mm. Like it's not cool, but it is part of life. It is part. It is something that we always will come up with. The further we go in the journey, um, the more we have to experience it. So you have to be, you have to be prepared for it. Was I prepared for it? No, not really. Um, in terms of you know my father passing away, it doesn't seem like long ago, but it's the years of track past. Um, you know, my my wife's father passed away also. Firm memories and and the thing the thing that. The thing that sticks with me most about that experience is when I, and I don't, I don't mind talking about this. This is going to get a little deep, a little dark, but it's okay. Um, when I saw my father's body and state, I knew that we are just a vehicle mm. because I had that overwhelming sense and feeling that that was not him. Mm. So his spirit and his soul had left, and what was left was just. A body a vessel mm. you know and and that was actually okay because i knew that he had passed on in that moment so yeah so for me experiencing that or witnessing that and going through the 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 two weeks of of you know being by a bedside watching and waiting ankle mm. and if you've been there before at ankle it's bloody hard and then someone accepting and then rejecting the process that they're going through is mm. not cool, is not hard, but I've seen it, I've touched it. Um, I know what it's like. So not to say I don't carry fear, but I understand what it has in store for me, for us. Mm. And again, let death be the teacher. Man, if you were told you had a week to live, a month to live, how different would you live your life? Why wait? For someone to tell you that, why wait till your final week to do all the things you want to do? You know, live every day you can to the fullest. We have such an amazing gift of life. You know, we have such an amazing gift of love, energy, all of the things that are great about us that we can share with each other and make everybody around us happy. Um, so why not do it? Why wait to the last week to say all the things you need to say? I've been reaching out, you know, the, the process for us has been great, reaching out, hearing from people I haven't heard from in a long time, talking to people I haven't talked to in a long time. And, you know, when you say to someone, oh, we should catch up for coffee, I'm like, listen, I've said it enough, let's catch up for coffee. Lock it's not it just, in, okay, let's do it, lock it in. When are you mm. free? Yeah. Accountability, if the, if the notion comes up, lock it in, get it done, and it's important, make it a habit, but just... Even the ability to sit down, check in with someone, and let them know that you care and you're thinking of them is pretty cool. Mm. Oh, mate, it's it is a gift. I want to go back a little bit on what you were just talking about because right. I um I went through a similar experience to you where my first time I experienced like death was sitting beside that and not someone super close, but it was you know someone that I was involved. With. But you're right, seeing seeing the end result was exactly the same sort of outcome for me. I was like, well, that's interesting. That's that's not them anymore. That's not even them. That's yeah. just a a vessel was so interesting um but whereas in my own experience as a child where you know my father went missing at sea so my, I lost my dad when I was eight years old um and as an eight-year-old kid where your loved one leaves your house one morning and never ever returns there's actually no closure there's no closure yeah. to anything especially as a kid so you're mm. kind of like so I, I lived just for years of just assuming he was going to come back you know like oh he'll walk in the door one day or he'll come to my school He'll walk past and pick me up one day and say, surprise, up with a big beard. I've been living on an island for, for, for 10 years and 
are finally back, you know, because there's no, so the whole journey and the different perspective of things is so interesting, isn't it? And like you said, don't wait for those chances because like I said, it was goodbye one morning and that was the last time ever. So you just never know, you know, like just yeah. never know. And if you do have young kids or you are, you know, whatever, I found that was something that never got unpacked for us. So I think as a family or myself, where it was like, hey, there's no closure here. There's a memorial with a photo in the front and we were eight years old and I didn't even understand what was happening. I was just like, yeah, what? Cool. And, and Mr. Positivity, like I said, the old optimistic, <laughs> you know, what do I call it? Delusional optimistic, I, optimism. I think it's from that, from, stems from that saying, yeah. hey, it's all good. Everything's okay. I don't know what you guys are upset for. You didn't even find him. He's coming back. And then it just yeah. sort of bred into my inner being and spirit that that was always how I would be. The middle child who saw the light, who thought, yep, it's coming back. No closure. So just an interesting experience in, in the way that it shapes you, eh? Like the way those things shape you and, and sort of, um, and, and having those support people around you that can talk to you about that sort of stuff and not just pretend nothing happened, uh, but yeah. like actually dig into it a little bit. Hey, guess what? Maybe we should probably, <laughs> let's maybe revisit this. Let's, let's sort of make sure you understand what's really going on here. Um, so yeah, just, just interesting vibes. Um, yeah, just thought I'd share that. <laughs> yeah, mate, uh, and it, that's, that's deep, eh? That's dark for us, mate. That's deep for yeah. us, <laughs> which, is, you, which is perfect, which is exactly where the, the, the direction that we need to head in and, and we want to head in. We want to talk about the, 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 the lows and the highs and how we deal with it as well. Um, you know, trying to trying to find words to speak at a funeral like a eulogy. And I know that you did something recently um, in terms of an exercise with a group of guys and you got them to write their own, was it eulogies or? Yeah, like a tombstone drill. Yeah, to go over and what yeah. would be the words that were said at your funeral by people in your life? Would it be by your wife, by your parents, by your kids? Um, yeah, very, very powerful, very eye-opening. Mm. Yeah, and I guess you get to that moment and you go, shit, what would they say? Mm. Do, do you know how you're perceived? Do you know, do you know enough mm. about yourself? Are you enough of or are you enough of yourself to to actually or do you show enough of yourself to act, for people to actually get you and understand you? Will the words that are written be truthful about you? Will it actually be you? Um, mate, I I listened to something recently which i thought was stunning beautiful um jim carrey uh comedian you know rather an eccentric eccentric guy had dealt with depression a lot of stuff if you can see if you see some stuff about him there's a couple of speeches that he's made check in check in with it because it's raw and it's real but he said you know along the lines of look, look in the in the process of actually truly being yourself you've got to accept that people will either love you or hate you and that's the reality of it, because we might go through life bending and breaking rules, trying to fit into the crowd because oh, I need to be this person to fit into the circle, or I'm gonna I'm gonna check myself in these situations so I don't I'm not gonna show 100% of myself, you know, or I'm gonna be shy here, I'm gonna be expressive here. Are you 100% authentic? Are you prepared to actually for people to say oh, it's just not me, or are you actually prepared to walk into those situations to say hey you're not me? Hey, we went through it all the time about environment, shifting environments. Are you in the right environment where you can be yourself, where people do love you? That's the sign that you're in the right, the right place. And if you're yourself and, and um, are you being a complete dick, check yourself. But, you know, are you prepared to 100% commit to being or knowing who you are, to getting to know yourself to a point where hand on heart, you can say, this is me. Fuck it. Mm. You know, love it or hate it. You can't control it. Don't be a dick. You know, the hope is that we can get to this place where we are, we are all these beautiful, content, spiritual beings about love and growth and sharing and honesty and caring. Reality, the world is probably completely the opposite. Yeah. yeah. Where there are a lot of complete dickheads. We don't need to, we can't help everybody, right? And not everybody Mate. can be helped or wants to be helped. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one I saw another day, bro, which is really funny. And it said, uh, why do you care if anyone likes you? You don't even like everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like worried about, yeah. It's like you're worried about yeah. everyone liking you. But hey, do you like every single person you've ever met in your entire life? 
like what are you what are you so worried about like you're not going to like everybody you're not going to yeah you know there'll be people that you just don't click with whatever it is but why are you so worried about trying to make sure everyone loves you it's so interesting yeah if you're you i mean if you're comfortable with yourself and your own skin and you wear clothes a different way and and you will like a boss just dominate that shit own it don't even for a second put your chin down we talked about it before i eh? walk in proud hold your chin up puff your chest out and walk into that room 100 percent authentically unapologetically beautifully you and i love seeing people in their element like that oh, it just it. makes my absolute day I, I love seeing the younger people that are like that you know yeah. and they've got a lot of growth to do and i've got to deal with a lot of hardship and adversity and people 100 percent. when you're in that position the fear is that tall poppy that people will try and bring you down to their level because they're not happy people will try and steal your light because they live in darkness mm -hmm. fuck it don't let anybody bloody rain on your parade you know you bang that drum as hard as you can and you keep marching through it you know the christmas parade keeps marching through rain or shine, hail or snow, it keeps moving and that's you. We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep proud. We're going to keep walking, keep marching because um, the beat of the drum is yours to manage, not anybody else's. Yep. And that whole, um, um, you know, like like dimming dimming yourself. Eh? Remember we talked about it. I watched Coach Carter the other day uh, with my son. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Those of you who haven't seen Coach Carter, watch it. I mean, I'm I'm a coach by trade. You know, I went to university to study coaching. I've It's what I love. Um, but anyway, there's some magical stuff in that movie. And um where one of the characters stands up and does a speech about what he thinks is fear, what he, what he, you know, what his understanding of fear is. Um, and he talks about that whole, like, don't dim your light so that others can shine, you know, which is what, what yeah. he, people do every day. It's like, you feel bad. Like, so you try to bury yourself and make yourself maybe inside you want to wear your hair a certain way. Maybe you want to say to the world that, Hey, I want to be an all black one day but you dim it down so others won't be intimidated by you or won't feel so bad about what themselves they're doing themselves. And it's so sad, eh? but it's just such a, a, you know, so interesting where, you know, just be yourself and let it live. And if someone doesn't deal with it or someone feels, you know, the right people will be inspired by it. Like you were just saying, those people you see yep. in the world doing their thing at hundred percent, you're inspired, whether they're cleaning windscreens at the traffic lights or they're selling something on the street with a, with a brilliant sandwich sign or whatever, if they love what they do and they're doing it at hundred percent, like it's inspiring. It's awesome. I love seeing that. Yeah. And, and it's interesting. I mean, look, what, what I, what I believe is, you know, we talk about being the absolute best version of yourself and trying to be the best you can be. And there's that line where you're thinking if you're in a competitive situation, you're so focused on being better than everybody else. Mm. And you might get beaten up in those situations because when you get in those environments, whether it's fitness or group group fitness instruction or, or any job competitive work element, there's a lot of politics that comes into it and, and being the best is subjective, right time, right place, um, right age, demographic, whatever it might come into it. It's no reflection on you. As we say, always do your best. If you are doing your best, no one can dim your light, you know? Are you connected to that true reason, that one thing that keeps you ticking over? Are you doing your best? And if that's okay, if you are in those scenarios, you are winning. So don't look externally for those rewards for people to generate that positivity to say, hey, you know, you are the best. If you're feeling it, if you, if you, if you are confident enough to say, mate, I'm giving my best, you know, I'm fucking good at what I do. Bravo to you. Don't let everybody else try and set that level for you because people will come in right and that's why they put us in boxes that's why they put they give us little t-shirts with little names and name tags they want to put you in a box and say hey Tech, we want you to aspire to this i'm like you can get fucked because my mm. aspiration is way higher than that right mm, mm, mm. i'm here to learn i'm here to love i'm here to grow and i'm here to be the best i can be do not try and stop me or get in my way <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for yeah. the opportunity <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and thank you <laughs> It's that whole take nothing personally, yeah. Remember the old, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 whether good or bad. When people are like greasing you up, hey, don't take it personally, <laughs> you know, you know, like yeah. if people are saying shit things to you, don't take it personally. Like you've got to live within yourself. And like you said, you can walk through the world like totally bulletproof, you can be invincible if you, if you can, if you understand why you're doing things and giving yourself 100%. You don't need anyone else to say anything else to you, you don't require it at all. And it's awesome, so powerful.
Yeah, and it's that feedback, right? If people are giving you feedback or, or their thoughts, again, it's subjective. It's how they view the world. It's what they've been told. It's what they learn. It's what they know. Take it with a grain of salt. And and always when I, if I hear people giving feedback and I, and I do hear the word I, I, I a lot, that's about them. That's not about you. Mm-hmm. You know, what are people telling you that will help you get to the next level? I say, man, what, what, I, what, what I really love about you being the operative word is this. You have a great way of doing this um, to get to that next level. We talk about it all the time. Have you thought about doing it this way? Even if you're if you're if you're thinking about delivering feedback to to someone or helping someone grow in a period of growth, or they have asked you for assistance, think about the way you word that feedback too. It's one hundred percent directed at them, around them, around their growth, not trying to lose the word i i i because again it's those restraints it's like a restraint of trade right Mm. you cannot operate out of (laughs) out of Mm. this border that we have created because no one's ever done it well mate well no one had ever got to the top of everest either Mm. hey you know yeah all of these cool things that we use no one had ever thought about these little Mm. communication devices no one had ever thought about the internet no one had ever been to the moon or have they been to the moon (laughs) another day bro another day (laughs) conspiracy theorist Uh, the day you tune in and cody no i've got tinfoil wrapped around the head uh, that is the end of the dmc podcast i'm (laughs) down on that one no way we'll create a new (laughs) we'll create a new podcast mate we won't do that one else that won't be on the dmc mate although yeah yeah there'll be some interesting chats mate there'll be some interesting deep and meaningful conspiracy Mate, no, it's so good, conspiracies, eh? mate. It's about conspiring to do something awesome. Freaking awesome, bro. Hey, uh, speaking of awesome, we did yes. get uh, someone that sent through a message that yeah. actually asked for us for a bit of content, like like they were sort of seeking out some information and maybe some uh, some help or some feedback from our experiences on something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, an acquaintance through the gymnasium that came into the class and listened to the mm. podcast and got some stuff. I love the love the content around fear and had actually written a paper for um, a component of completing martial, uh, martial arts and moving to the next level around fear. Mm. But she was um, she had some questions around and it was we we talked about setbacks before, but you know, how do you deal with the physical and emotional strain and stress of injury? And yeah, it is a massive setback. So I thought, you know, the, the way that the way that we think about it, and both of us have been through some in, injuries and bro- <laughs> broken a couple of things um, in our past, and it's all about that comeback trailer. Eh, eh? Um, yeah, so it was really all around the setbacks and how do we overcome the hurdles physically, mentally, spiritually uh, on if we break, how do we fix it? How do we move forward? Um, yeah, mate. So Ooh. wowzers. Silhouette. Um, it's a great topic. Eh? And I know that um, it's been something here, like you said, oh, it is. it's been something that we've all, that we've, you know, many of us have, have had to deal with and, and again, I, I like speaking about this because from experience, I don't think I was prepared to deal with it at the times that I dealt with the most injuries. Um, and also I didn't have access to information or people that could probably help me, which we can get now, you know? So like, you know, I've had a million injuries and I was probably pretty famous for it in my rugby days. Um, and the ones that sort of end, ended my rugby career were just my, my knee. One of my knees um, just blew out so many times, so many injuries, so many... Uh, returning from injury too early um, and just putting my body through shit that it shouldn't have had to do, you know, like, and, um, and not being prepared to even rest properly or, or prepared to um, just take a break in order to get better again. It was like, I cannot lose this momentum. So I did all the wrong things. Um, You know, at one stage I was running on the rugby field and my knee completely locked up because there was cartilage floating everywhere and I shook it around to the point where it went pop and went back to normal. I just kept on playing um, and didn't even think about it. I was like, cool as. But the problem was the next time it did that, it flipped so much that it never came straight until I booked in for surgery about a week or so later. Um, and again, just dumb, dumb ways to deal with your body. Um, and the setbacks came. They were inevitable. Whereas 
if you take them at the time, if you're smart about it, if you rest properly, if you look after yourself properly, you know, perhaps I would have had a longer rugby career than just 25, I think it was, by the time I ended up quitting rugby. 25. Wow. Well, pretty old. Young. Well, I wasn't going to make it. I, I, I had to make the decision like, well, mate, you're 25, you're broken, you've caved your face in, your knees are broken, um, you've got no cartilage left because they basically have to remove it all out of one knee. And so I always knew that I wanted to have kids. I always knew I wanted to be fit and active and healthy for the rest of my life. And I love working out. So I just had to make the choice. And lucky I did it then and lucky I've got through, touch wood, as, as, luck, as good as I have. You know, I can still run. I can still do everything. Um, but maybe one or two more seasons of trying to push that maybe would have changed the outcome, you know? Yeah. Not, um, there's, not, there's not a lot of advice there on how to deal with uh, setbacks, by the way, yet. But I'm just... Getting us into it. <laughs> <laughs> same for same for me mate i you know it can be kind of like a cascade and and i think you know we talk about it before about letting things go because what we ha ten have a tendency to do is is we carry the memory of those injuries and those negative moments and so every time we do it again it's like oh not again oh not again it can be a completely separate injury it can be a completely separate environment it, it can be because you're overreaching, overstretching or doing something stupid, something you know was wrong that you shouldn't have been doing. But um, yeah, yeah, so it, 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 it can compound and be like a massive snowball that turns into an avalanche and gets the better of you mentally and emotionally. It's hard, especially when you're invested in doing something that you really, really love and then it's taken away from you in an instant um and i've got a couple of a couple of good a good stories and you know i love a good story um should we tag team on stories bro so i don't talk for like four and a half days Shit, yeah yes, so so yeah. mate one one really simple thing um as a lot of people know i was into triathlon was was um i say fortunate enough but i did work flipping hard to to qualify to go to the world champs and represent new zealand which is a great moment um, in triathlon at age group, might I say, not elite, um, was never at that level. And um, got over to Hawaii with the New Zealand team, amazing experience, great people, just that that team environment, everybody's frothers, everybody's frothing, everybody's fit, um, supercharged athletes, some amazing, inspiring stories and people in that, in that environment, great coaches, great support staff, the people that work hard, invest their life, the volunteers, all of those types of things. It's great about New Zealand sport. <laughs> Yes, New Zealand. Um, and uh, so we were going out doing training runs, training rides, hanging out, shooting the shit, resting, doing all those types of things. Went up, we had a barbecue one night on the roof and um, started to get a bit of a gut sake. And um, yeah, started to get progressively worse and to a stage where I was very, very sick. And so the team um team manager came in and looked at me and said nah we've got to get you to hospital so they put me up carried me off straight to hospital and um once they knew i had insurance that's when they said they decided that they would scan um scan me so that was good and thank goodness i did have insurance and it was uh my appendix was about to burst and it's one of those things you talk about injuries and instances and setbacks this was something that you had no control over you know, I was in the, arguably the shape of my life. I trained super hard to qualify and then super hard to get there to the start line, knowing that I was ready to take on the challenge and just be the best I could be and, you know, represent uh, represent New Zealand, which is something pretty cool when you strap a silver fern on, you know. Um, and that was taken away from me. So I remember when the, the doctor came in and said, hey, look, I'm sorry that uh, it's appendicitis. We're going to have to operate. It's urgent. Um, and yeah, they drugged me up. And I said, can you feel that? And I said, yeah. They gave me some more stuff. Can you feel that? And I went, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, before you know it, I was in, I was in surgery. I woke up, uh, came, came to pretty quick. And they said, look, we had some issues. Um, we got it out. And that day, it, was, it wasn't pee hole. There was, a, I've got, still got a little scar, a little memento. And they said it ruptured on the way out. Um, so there was still a little bit of stuff that we missed. So I was in a week going through where I felt great and felt really, really bad. So the stuff was just pumping through the system. So my temperature would go absolutely through the roof and I felt on, you know, death's door and then I'd swing roundabout. Um, wow. the, the team management rang my wife from Hawaii and said, hey, there's a, um, 
there's been an issue. <laughs> and she was like, what? And uh, yeah, they had to explain that I was actually okay. Um, but it was pretty close. It could have been, it could have been way worse. Um, but I remember just the doctor saying, hey, look, um, this was five days prior to the event taking place. He said, mate, there is no way that you can compete. I'm sorry, but um, yeah, you're going to be in hospital for another five, six days. And I just burst into tears. I just broke down in that moment because everything that I had worked hard for, you know, it just came down to this little moment, something I couldn't control rather than it was in my own hands. You know, if I'd fallen off a bike, if I'd, you know, pushed too hard and hurt my back or done something, I could explain it, but that was something that I couldn't explain. Mm. And it took me a long, long time to, to get over that. Um, and so I just, I, I remember just walking down to the, 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 the promenade and watching the athletes have my little plaster on there. Um, shredded though, lost a lot of weight. <laughs> um, and the first thing I asked for was fries because I couldn't eat up until then. So I got some fries and some pizza. And I think all up the treatment cost about $140,000. So thankfully we had insurance or so it would have been a reward of hurt. But yeah, having that, what was a dream at that time taken away from me abruptly mm -hmm. broke me. Mm. broke me mentally before it broke me physically took me out of the sport for a long long time because I couldn't understand it and I didn't take the time to unpack it mm. and nothing could could justify it so I kind of just shut down and I went through the motions from there mm. and I started I started group fit um and I was teaching teaching group fit and it was a funny moment actually, because I was talking to people about taking risks, taking chances, being the best they could be, doing the best they can. And I got to that moment where I was like, mate, you are absolutely full of shit. Here you are talking, telling people to take chances and you are talking the talk, but you are not walking the walk. You are taking no steps yourself to unpack what happened, why it happened, but to move forward. You know, if you can't justify it, that's fine. Shit happens and it happened to me. You know, was it the universe pointing directly at me? No, it was just one of those things that happens. Mm. You know, you can look at the science of appendicitis and why it happens. Nobody flipping knows why, why it happens. It's not this, okay, when you get to the age of 27, mm. like a wisdom tooth, you will have this pulled out. It just doesn't happen like that. So it's just one of those things. And so I put myself, I'm just like, look, um, I want to compete again. I want to get out there and I want to do the things that I love again. I want to take chances again. I want to be the best I can be again. So the, that, that process out of, yeah, so much pain, so much men, mental stress to come back, just a hollow version of myself um, from, from Hawaii. And um, I loved it because it was in one of the magazines they said, and they said after, uh, and the hard luck story of the world champs was Adam Ruby, who had to undergo minor surgery. And I'm like, dude, ah. I could have very easily, it could have, it was, it could have gone either way very, very quickly. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, you know, because if it bursts, uh, it bursts while they were taking it out. So a little bit of poo got in there. Mm. And, um, and I was very lucky that it ended up with blood poisoning. Mm. There was enough, you know, they had enough control over it, but there was some pretty nasty drugs getting pumped in. Um, mm. So the comeback was mental for me, not not physical um, for yeah. that. But again, it was just one of those moments where it was a light switch where I was like, you're full of shit, get over yourself. Didn't happen to you. It may have happened for a reason, maybe to get to this moment to realize, you know, is it important? Well, I discovered that it was, mm. you know, was, was pushing myself, was getting to a point. Did I feel that, that sense of completion? No. And that's probably why I looked at Ironman because in terms of sense of completion, mate, when you, if you can complete an Ironman, then yeah, <laughs> there's a lot in your life that you can accomplish. So that's why I moved on. I, I shifted my goals and said, okay, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go complete an Ironman distance because I didn't get to um, compete or complete a, a dream or a goal of mine. Mm. Yeah. So that's story number one. That's mental, not physical, I guess. Mate, it's, that's cool, because eh? I've never really, oh, kind of, and I think it's a good segue onto um, what I wanted to share next was injuries at times, and depending on the time, is a, it's a good way for us to slow things down, right? Like we all live life so quick and we try to hurry through everything. We try to fast track everything. 
Um, and yet, often we just need to be slowed down, slowed down the way we think, what we're planning, our goals. Um, but that doesn't always, and the reason why I'm saying that is because we, when I went through some large injuries, um, I didn't think it was a slowdown thing. I found ways to apply Band-Aids so I can get through it because, um, because I had a target, right? So, so one year, years ago, a, a, you know, an under 20 year old team, I, I made this New Zealand, a New Zealand private rugby team it was called the New Zealand Nike Youth Tour. Um, and anyway, you get sort of, you get, a, you get a, um, your rugby club, put your name forward, you get selected and whatnot. Anyway, I got selected for this tour, which was one month through Canada, uh, Ireland, and I think there was, a, there was a game over in London as well. All 20 year olds traveling the world for a month. How good could it get? So anyway, leading up to that, the day that we found out was the day I was playing for Otago. For those of you in New Zealand, I played for Otago Colts, which is an under-20 team. And we're playing against Wellington Colts, who a good friend of mine here in Christchurch was on that team, who also came on tour with me. Anyway, about five minutes into the game, I'm, I'm, I'm in this mall in this ruck. I'm trying to clear the ball out, trying to you know channel my Richie McCaw. And I get blown out by these two dudes. Another guy who came on the tour with us. We didn't know each other at the time. And it destroyed my knee. It destroyed my foot and my ankle. And I was the only guy, or maybe actually one other guy, who had to stay at the hotel room that entire night while the rest of the team went out and partied and experienced Wellington, which I never got to do, ever. Still to this day, I've never got to do. <laughs> anyway, because of I'd just been selected for this team, uh, the, down, the turnaround was only like four weeks or something before this tour began. And there was no chance... I was not missing this tour. We'd fundraise lots of money. Um, I had the All Blacks. I had the All Black front row. So I was Case Muse, Carl Hoft, and Anton Oliver at the time. Donated all their All Black memorabilia. They did public speaking for me in my rugby club. And we raised like 10 grand or something for me to go on this tour, right? So there's, I, I couldn't let all these people down. I committed to it. I told everyone. So what I'm saying is I didn't slow down. I pumped myself full of so many drugs, uh, injections when possible, Voltarins, like handfuls every single day because I couldn't even practice without them and enough strapping tape to tape up an entire football team on one leg every single training session um, so I went on this tour I played every game I, uh, I got through it all I ate so much <laughs> I ate so many Voltarins so the moral of the story is that I, I, I created these band-aids to get through something where I should have slowed down and realized hey What's the long-term implications from what's going on here? Is this something I need to really look out for and look after? Um, and in my head, of course, it wasn't, which led on to all the knee surgeries, which led on to me being diagnosed one year with Crohn's disease. And oh. those of you that know me now would never even guess it because obviously I don't have Crohn's disease, but I was put in hospital for an entire week. I was pumped full of so many drugs and I was told to take medication for the rest of my life because I had Crohn's disease. Now I know to this day, I ate so many Voltarins on almost a daily basis, which are what? What do they do? They cause stomach bleeding. They cause bleeding everywhere. Everyone knows this. That's why we don't eat them all the time. Um, so a combination of those, and also at the time I was into party pills. Remember the ones you could buy from the store that were like oh, cool charges or something? Yeah, yeah. They were yeah. worse than anything you can imagine. But I, I, was, I was not drinking so much with my footy, but I was actually taking a lot of those and going to, going to dance clubs and whatnot and, and I didn't want to drink as much, but the combination of all that had torn my insides to pieces where I was gushing with blood on a daily basis, right? It was very, very bad. Um, so that would have, like, so what I'm saying here is that instead of taking the injury, slowing things down, unpacking it, understanding what's going on, what are the implications of doing what I was doing? You know, am I going to be a paid professional rugby player at some point? Am I going to make a million dollars? Am I going to be able to function properly? Whatever, it didn't matter. Who cares? I've got to make the tour. I've got to make the rugby team. I've got to do this. Um, and well, of course, since then, I've, I've stopped all medication 15, 16 years ago. Now, when I first went to Korea um, and have been cleared of any, any illness at all. Um, but what a way to learn a lesson, eh? Like slow down, listen to your body, check it out. Don't chuck Band-Aids on because the Band-Aids will only cover up the festering scabby sores until your body says, hey, bro, you know, Either it's worse than that. But like, remember, we talk about the old Band-Aid. Oh, oh, not that yeah. bad. Or you open it, and you're like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you're like, I'm not touching that thing ever again. Like, cover it up, or you've just got to deal with it and cut it all out. But, um, you know, I think if I could reflect on that, I would have, I would have had, if I had someone to talk through, um, 
to, to say, look, Cody, maybe just slow things down a little bit and understand there's a reason your body's probably doing this at 20, I don't know, yeah, well, I said under 20s, right? So as a 20, 20 year old, your body is smashed. You've got no cartilage left in your knees. Don't you think you should have a little think about this, about these injuries and what's going on? Um, but yeah. <laughs> No one Mate, we talk time. about, you know, yeah, you know, we're reading Matthew McConaughey's book and Green Lights. And there's a couple of people that have picked that book up and, and loved it, Green Lights. But we also, we also should talk about amber lights or orange lights. There are a couple yeah. of warning shots that we do get that we need to hear yeah. advice to before they become red lights. And even then we have a tendency to run those, eh? you just turn mm. a blind eye, you're not paying attention and you blow straight through a red light. Sooner or later, you will get caught. Um, you need you need to pay attention to the small things and if you're in tune with your body you know you know if you're busted or broken and if you're truly passionate about continuing to doing the thing that you love for a long time then you have to check yourself and make sure you're in shape to be able to do it you know if it's if it's little nagging injuries that can talk that can turn into big things oh, again a great example for me was i had a shin i had a shin ache and i thought it was shin splints and I ran with it for a long time. And I, lo I loved running. I used to run every day, um, 100 plus Ks a week, just churn out the Ks around the bays with the old shirt off, running like an absolute machine. And that turned into or developed into a stress fracture and I needed a bone graft. Oh. Because I could put up with a little bit of pain till it got to a stage where it was, yeah, significant enough. If I had listened, listened back then and, you know, the the... the the diagnosis or prognosis would have been, mate, you just need to rest or, um, and would I have, would I have potentially done that? Yeah. Would I have heated <laughs> that orange light? Even then, eh? You know, um, uh, it's a funny thing when you're, when you're super passionate about something, oh, you, you need to stop running. Mate, tell me to stop breathing. Don't <laughs> tell me to stop running. Yeah. It's who I am. It's what I do. What are you talking it's about? It's who I am. It's what I do. Well, you want to keep doing it, you dickhead, then here's what you need to do. Because I could have checked myself at that stage. But the bright side of this and where I want to get to with this was certainly it took me away from the running or running to the level that I used to be able to run at. Mm. So I've got to be careful and, and you know, the, the footwear and all of those types of things and the, the ways that I run and the, the the frequency but it, it pushed me over to cycling and cycling is mm. my true passion i love it it was a burning you know burning desire to go cycling to move to do things and it's more than just exercise for me it's you know going out shooting shit with my mates it's going out thinking it's moving it's keeping me fit great for quad strength as you move into old age because those are the muscles that keep you upright allow you to walk it has kept me in good shape for an old fella that's that's for sure it's given me the ability to meet some amazing people to be able to travel across the world and do some cool stuff with some incredible people to do some stuff some cycle training stuff through uh the gym and again meet some stunning people so you know if you got to think about if life steers you in a direction because of an injury, there is always opportunity and an option to look at something new. Because if you if you have passion for something, you can find another thing to be just as passionate about or to pour your energy into. And if it's about movement, like I say, cycling's full of broken runners. It is, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. guys that, that break down and, and they go, they love the cardiovascular challenge. They like the kit. They love the Lycra secretly. They like shaving their legs. That's what it's all about really, isn't it? But, um, but they go to it because it's that non-jarring and they can, they can be competitive. They can, they do that for, for a very, very, very long time. For me, the competitive desire is gone. It's, it's way too dangerous for me now. I've got way, way more things to do, but I still love, it, love going out there and doing that. So if you are in a situation where you do find yourself injured or broken, you know, or if you're getting those orange lights, those amber lights, slow down and get it sorted. Fuck's sake, get it sorted. It's important because again, if you love what you're doing, don't train through pain. Don't feel as though it's the no pain, no gain. Mm. Bullshit. Mm. bullshit you look at the science they actually say mate if you're hurting day after day after workouts then potentially you're just training at the wrong intensity don't train at high intensity all the time um, athletes every athlete can't train at max intensity 
all the time. They do a lot of slow stuff. They do a lot of endurance. You know, they look after themselves. They do flexibility. They do stability. They rest. They recover. Lucky, lucky they're professional athletes, so they probably have a little more downtime as opposed to uptime. But we need to find that balance. So, a listen to your body. Look for the mm. for the red lights. I know we're super. I know what it's like. We, me and Cody, know what it's like. Mm. You know, we're we're high in energy. We love doing the things we do. But if you are broken and continuously, like that guy that was pushing that weight that was way too heavy, that tore his tore his um, yeah. pec, <clears throat> completely yeah. tore his pec. Shouldn't have been doing that heavy. That's stupid. Oh, Why do it? Um, Why do that type of stuff? How many times, bro, have you seen people at the gym that um, took a week off for some reason? And normally it's not a decision, which is sad. You know, like I always say to people I coach, if you don't make the decision when to rest, your body will do it for you, whether it's through sickness, injury, or catastrophic injury even. Like, so yeah. either plan it or schedule it or whatever. But you get those people who are away for a week, they come back in, they're like, oh, bro, I missed a whole week of training. Boom, PR. They lift the biggest deadlift I've ever lifted in their lives. Because yep. that's what they needed to do. It's like, bro, you've took this massive... People don't realize how important those breaks are. And uh, I'm, I'm speaking from knowledge, but not necessarily from experience because I hate resting and uh, I love to train, but I'm not training <laughs> as hard. I'm, I'm definitely not training as hard as I used to. And my ego is no longer involved. So it's not like I'm pushing as crazy as I used to. So I can train a lot longer. Like I'm, I'm more sustainable programming um, now. Yep. But yeah, people take that week off, even if they're sick sometimes, but they come back and you're like, whoa, I feel strong. It's like, how good is that? Think about if you did it on purpose. Yeah. If, if you plan yeah. that stuff, you know? Yes, yeah, so that thing I, I feel as though I have to do it. Well, you know, resting can be two things. We talk, the, the thing that we refer to is act, active rest. Mm. So oh, I normally go for run and, and I talk to people all the time. Well, what, what if you just go for a walk? Oh, so good. You know, what if you've if got a dog or, or children or just want to go for a walk by yourself? Take, don't worry about the data. Take your watch off. Mm. Just leave it behind and go out and experience a whole new layer, a whole new level where this is just you, maybe listening to an awesome podcast. We've got a, we've got a great idea. It's called the DMC, Deep and Meaningful Chats. Recommend oh, you, it to your friends. Get you can download it, that. mate. Download also, it on Spotify. It, download it, yeah, yeah. And subscribe. But if you're having trouble sleeping too, it's awesome for that idea. <laughs> um, but just do it in a different, 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 way, different way. Don't feel as if as you're yeah. going backwards because rest is repair. Rest is rebuilding. And it's the same... The same thing when, you know, for me, I had a knee surgery, had a, a ACL reconstruction, and it was the patella tendon where they cut the knee open, they take a slip mm. of the tendon, rebuild the, the ligament, put a screw in it, tie a knot in it. The, the physio recently, actually, when I was getting my knee checked, he saw the little bolt there and he's going, awesome. Is that the bolt? <laughs> awesome. And, but what I did was why I got surgery, because I'd done medial ligaments and I spent six months in a cast from my ankle right to the top my inner thigh six months in a cast old school right the old school and now you're looking at medials and ligaments and repair when the all blacks they say oh he's done his medials mate he'll be back in three weeks they tape him up and inject oh, yeah. him and squeeze something into them and they're gone technology and and money and all of that type of thing desire gets them back to the start line again probably too early but we won't go into that um so i knew it was like i'm not going through that again I'm not going through another long period where I am just lying on my back with my leg in the air, inability to do anything. Um, I'm going to get the surgery. And I was religious and relentless in the way that I listened to the advice. I did everything they asked me to do. And even then, when I got to a point where they said, you can start doing that, it was proceed with caution because there was no way I was going to put myself at risk. And slowly but surely, I built myself up to an extent where I knew that, that you know, confidence is a big thing. You lose complete confidence to do the things you used to do, but you just need to find a way to do them differently mm -hmm. or slower. But you can still get that gratification. So I learned to do things from my still completed an Ironman distance after having a full rebuild um, of the knee, but just did it a different way. Didn't, didn't build myself up. But again, I listened to the advice that was given to me and I did not stray. The worst thing is when you get an injury and you go, oh, you know what? That actually feels okay. Mm. That feels okay. I think I'll get into it. I'll go back in today, you know? 
maybe go back into light duties, but don't quite try and go for that one RM max or don't go in and try and run your personal PP. Don't take your watch with you. Um, get in, do something different, do something that's lower intensity, but is movement based, do some strength work, mm -hmm. work another part of your body, which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like I say, if the, if the guys are lifting weights and they get um, uh, shoulders, upper body injuries, go into a cycle studio, do some, you can do some strength and conditioning options. on a bicycle. Yeah. You can do some great cardio work. You know, you can build anaerobic and aerobic and, uh, and, and uh, capacity and endurance. You can do that. Um, lower body breaks, work on the upper body. Mate, Think about some could... great core exercises, all of those types of things. Mm. There is a way for you to gratify that desire to keep moving for activation, to sweat, to feel a little bit of pain because we know we love it. Yeah. But there are always options and opportunities. But first, pay attention to the signals, okay? Listen for the, like, listen for the amber lights, okay? And if you get to a red light, check yourself. If someone is telling you to, to get it checked, Go to a professional. If you don't believe them, get get you know get additional adv advice. Um, you can go to a physio. You can go to a doctor. You can um, don't look on the internet. <laughs> nah. Nah. Do not look on the internet for medical advice because it'll only freak you out. <laughs> um, nice. And and do whatever it takes to get it done because if it's important, right? You'll do whatever it takes. If there's a goal that you want, you'll do whatever it takes. This is part of it. You've got to be at your absolute best. So why dedicate yourself to operating at 60% because you're going through this pain or you don't have a willingness just to slow down, stop. COVID was a great time because mm. um, uh, my wife had Achilles issues and she used to run in the hills a lot in town. COVID meant that when we were based here, she did a lot of flat running and her Achilles issues just suddenly disappeared mm. and she could continue to run and it's running some fair distances now, but it was just the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So doing things a different way or finding a different way to do things. Yes, you can keep moving. You can find an option or opportunity to do it. But if someone says rest and it is critical and essential, don't look at it at, a, at, at, at just, oh, it's advice. What do they know? Well, mate, you know, people mm -hmm. have studied a long, long time. We've, we've got some very fortunate to have some very experienced medical professionals just do whatever it takes to get better and to get back into it and back yourself confidence get that confidence back i think um the mi the mindset change is really important when you like again going through lots of injuries or coaching a lot of people through injuries is like stop focusing on what you can't do and just focus on what you can do yeah um yeah. And the prime example I, I had a guy messaged me one day in my gym and he's like i can't work out today i broke my finger uh in a fight in the weekend the south in korea and i'm like and I mean, like, are you serious? He goes, oh, yeah, I've got a broken finger. And I'm like, so I sent him a photo of someone, an amputee with no arms doing front squats. I'm yeah. Like, well, they, yeah. I think they've got bigger problems than you, mate, and they don't give a shit, and they're doing what they can do. <laughs> you know, like you said, get on a bike. You can still do things. And if someone's had a real major long-term journey of trying to get fit or starting the journey of fitness, you don't want any obstacles to, to give you major hiccups because you can go backwards way faster than you go forwards. That's for sure. We yeah. all know that. So, you, so don't lose the momentum. If going to the gym every day or, you know, sorry, for three, four days a week has been a major lifetime goal that you finally led up to, do not let that stop. Even if you just show up and get on the bike for 20 minutes, make sure the schedule and your habit and everything remains the same. Focus on what you can do. Don't come back too early on what's actually the injury. Take your time. You know, we say once you feel 100, two more weeks. That's what I try to yeah. say. Like once you yeah. feel 100, give it two more weeks. I know you want to go and do some sprints. But do not do it. Just take your time. Slow it down. Yeah, and, and go back to Eric the Preacher, eh? If you're thinking about quitting, why did you even start? And, and mm. the, the backup to that was it takes 10,000 hours to become good at something, to, to master something. And so why quit at 9,800 hours? So if you've done, if, you, if you've invested, gone through all of this time, why would you even consider for a moment to put that at risk? Or why would, the, why would the thought of going backwards for two weeks scare you when you've got, 9,800 hours under your belt. Are you going to sacrifice that? You know, it's such a small part that you're asking just to check out and you may discover something, you know, you, you may get a, a whole new a breath of fresh air. It may be uh, mental, spiritual, more than physical.
there are a couple of things, you know, your enthusiasm. Um, I look at when I change, actually changing jobs was a good thing because I, I got out of one job and I, and I really wasn't happy there. There was a number of things that I didn't like. I didn't like the, the trade I was in, the people I was involved, involved with. So I stepped out of it, um, sold, out, sold out of that, that business and took some time off. And what that gave me the opportunity to do was think about what I really loved about what I did and what I didn't like. So that, that gave me time to think about, okay, if this is the stuff I love, this is what I'm going to pursue. Because why would I put myself in the same environment, the same situation? And again, it's that, do I expect a different result by doing exactly the same things? Don't be a dick, mate. You know more than that. You're more experienced. You're smarter than that. So I went in to say, okay, this is, you know, I'm people focused. I like helping people. This is what I'm going to do. And that was my path. And that's what I poured my energy and effort and was lucky enough to meet someone with the same sort of mantra and that culture and charisma. And that led to another conversation. And then, yeah, like I say, we, we, we've talked about it before. I feel as though I am exactly where I need to be, right place, right time, right people, right situation. But I give myself credit for making those situations possible by taking the time to think about it to sit back when I've got those quiet times, that the injury, is it forcing me to make a decision? Well, sometimes, but can I turn a negative into a positive? My mindset, well, shit, of course I can. Could I sit there and stew for months and months on why me? Why is it always me? Well, get fucked because look around. You know, there are a lot of people suffering and hurting in the world with bigger stuff going on than you and I will ever comprehend. But here we are. Look at the opportunity that we have. And if you get a little roadblock. Well, you can either go around it, it. what it is. You can go over it or you go fucking straight through it, mate. It's the oh, oh, mate. What are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to just turn around and go, oh. oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Let's go oh, 9,800 hours. Yeah. Nah, I'll give up. Yeah, That'll be it. I'll, I'll quit. Yeah. I'll quit. Don't you dare. Don't you give up for a second. Again, if you have to. The, the, the path's not always straight, like the, to the top of the mountain, the old mate, the corner there. Mm -hmm. You know, the path is yours to find. It will be unique to you. It'll have zigs, it'll have zags, it'll have periods where you want to stop, periods where you feel like you are going to die. Like, you know, and that reconfirms your desire. If it is important, you will keep pushing. That's when you find out what you are truly passionate about in those moments of adversity and injury is one of those moments oh. some some incredible players sport players that have had to change tack um bec because of horrific injuries mm. you know horrific injuries but have still managed to get their life back get their life back together it is difficult when your body is your daily wage when it's your money yeah. maker but well, there is still it, opportunity yeah. out there yeah. yeah just keep yeah. it rolling and moving and shaking and you know, and the you same old thing, like, like, like old mate here on the rock, eh? it's like, also be prepared that whatever you're working towards and whatever your target you've got, once you get there and your hands are in the air, it's very short lived. It's very fleeting if your reasons are just to achieve that goal. You know, that's the sad reality. We've all done it, right? Where you achieve a goal, you're stoked, you're loving it. But then there's another mountain across, across the valley because it always keeps moving. You know, that sub, the, um, it, yeah. have you experienced it? The old post event or the post goal setting depression? Where you finish oh, it and then you're like, big time, oh, big time, man. What? What? And they, it's just so. It's just brutal, eh? It's a, it's a very, very brutal feeling. We get it after events a lot for group fitness. You know, you hype yourself up mm. and you put all this effort mm. and energy, and then it's over, and then no one gives a shit, and it's done. And then they're so far advanced into the next thing, and you're kind of still in that little pocket of reflection. And how was yeah. it for me? Internalizing everything, taking everything personally. But yeah. old mate is a good example on the cliff there. You know, when you get to the top, look down, enjoy the experience. But then the next thing you've got to do is look straight up and see where the next mountain is, see where the next big challenge is. Eh? And that's what's great about life. That's what we love. That's what fronting for these podcasts is all about in our little day, daily DMCs. Because we know it does get tough. Shit, yes, we know that. We accept it. Does it make life easy? No. No. Do you want life to be easy? We need a little bit of hardship. Shit, you know? Yes. So you can appreciate those little things that you work for. And again, when you get these little things, when you get to points in your life, celebrate it, give yourself massive credit, yeah. massive credit for getting, for getting to that point. And, and I was going through it this week. You know, when, you get, when you get a captive audience of people in a room 
it's despite everything that life has thrown at you today, here you are. Mm. You know, here you are. Take a moment to reflect because all of these negatives, do you know what? We just turn them into massive positives because here you are. Yeah. Built on all heartbreak, you know, moments where you thought you couldn't go on. Here you are, you know, injuries. Did it. Will I ever run again? Here you are. Mm. Sickness. Did you ever think you'd get to a point where there would be fear running through every country in the world? You know, people still dying fearful. Would the lights be out? The lights are still on. Here we are still moving forward, still supporting each other, still finding ways to live our lives to the absolute max, climbing mountain after mountain and if you think you know life's going to be great after this and i'm sure it will be amazing that we see amazing things around the corner we've still got some we've still got some shit to deal with hey eh? mm-hmm. and part of this is us making the planet a way way better place while we're here let death be your teacher hey bro yeah. and it's yeah, good to bro. see um chancy mate i know i put you on the spot um, asking you about fear, eh? And the old step back and the and the pale, you you reflected on it. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> Lila. Uh, Yo, man, I ain't afraid of nothing. <laughs> Except nothing to fear, but fear itself. Yeah, but that, so but, good, but, so good, but that's okay. Learn to process it. Learn to learn learn for ways to. That's what we're saying. Learn learn to deal with it. Rational yep. versus irrational. Um, I, uh, I, I do like I do like the idea of searching out ways to be more uncomfortable, and you'll love this from old Goggins, eh? Like he's sitting at home and just saying, like, you know, get in get in situations where it's uncomfortable, where you where you are being asked the uncomfortable questions, or you're doing the uncomfortable things. If you're sitting at home and it starts raining, that's when old mate gets his running shoes on and goes running because now it's harder than what it would be if it wasn't raining. You know, like try to stop stop trying to find the real easy route route through everything. Just take the take the hard way. So. Um, if standing in front and being asked difficult questions is difficult, do it more often. They'll, they'll soon come, they'll, they'll get easier as the time goes by. That's it. That's it. Eh? Conversations are difficult. Opening up is, mm. is bloody difficult and challenging. Um, trying to be help, helpful to people that sometimes don't feel as though they recognize it or, or you know, lead you to believe that they don't need help is, is kind of challenging, but you've just got to persevere if it's important to you. You know, continue to continue to do it to to drive and thrive and to do better and one funny thing i did say last night you know we talk we talk about it participation is a funny word in um in new zealand we talk about the participation vibe but participation is great as long as you participate Mm. you know participate isn't just cruising it's still doing yeah so do Code, mate. in this thing called life well we did that we talked about that over the weekend with our resurrection program we, we followed the code of course number one show up the, but yep. showing up is really important we know that but number two you've got to do the work you can't just show up and then expect everyone else to do the work for you so you can't show up in life and be like oh i'm here but i'm just going to do nothing i'm not going to take part you got to play the game and then number three never give up never quit Ooh, relentless love that and then number four which we'll love here, which is a good thing with the DMC podcast is leave no one behind. Look out for yeah. everyone. Look out for each other because who cares wins? Yeah, we got you, mate. We got you. I love that, bro. That's awesome. That's <laughs> stunning. It's the magic, my that's brother. Stunning. And that's, that's what it should be all about, eh? That's what it should be all about, coming together and smashing, smashing those goals and celebrating it. The who cares wins is true because... Uh, we care a great deal that's why we're doing that and again we 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 love the feedback we love the fact that that you know if one or two people are reaching out to us it's a win for Mm -hmm. us if we can sit down and talk to talk to one person have those chats in our lives eh, and it it expands and just say yep um i care are you okay are you okay Mm -hmm. are you okay and for people to talk to us and come out I watched one the other day. It was a TV show. I only watched one episode on Netflix. I didn't, wasn't really into it. But he said, he asked everybody, uh, how can I help? How can I help? But it was just his first thing. Like anyone is like, how can I help? What can I do? How are you? How can I help? 
And I thought, yeah, it's yeah. awesome, eh? Like, just be of service. If you've got some time, hey, man, how can I help? You know, simple, yeah. simple old question. I thought it was real powerful, eh? Yeah, mate. So, so, team, it's that big, hairy, audacious goal. Take steps, small bites, small wins. If you think you're, if your goal is this incredibly huge mountain, break it down into small steps. That's all it is, is one foot in front of the other, carve those steps, take them one at a time. They may be big steps at time, little steps and other times, but it's that one foot in front of the other. If you think your goal will come to you by sitting on your bum, no. No one became a doctor by sitting on the couch, right? No one became a, a, an Olympic champion by sleeping most of the day. You know, embrace the grind. It's what we are put here to do and share as much positive energy and love as you can with everybody around you. Just get out and go get it. We love life, mate. We, we're, yeah, the, the, the more we get into it, the more we appreciate it. It is fleeting. And again, we have experienced the other side of it, eh, bro? You know, mm. we've been very close to it. So we know every day we get to spend on this earth is an absolute blessing we never know we never know when our final day will be and it may be a, a confronting thought but every opportunity we get to connect and share and grow what will people say about you when the day comes for you to start the next part of your journey what will people say will it be a reflection of you roger that roger that big dog so Mate, I think we will cut today and finish her up, big dog. We've done. Yeah, bro. Mate, we're crushing it. We're crushing it. Woo! Hey, as listeners know, Love we don't. Uh, we yeah yeah yeah. We don't. Uh, chatting is definitely not something we um we have trouble with, and that's why you'll see from our Instagram, it's only videos. We'll probably never do any writing because we like to talk. We like to share through the we medium of chat. voice. Um, but again, team, if you made it this far, do. Do us a favor and please give us a like, follow, subscribe, comment, share, um, send through those questions like we got about injuries. Like we really are open to questions. We'd love to be able to address some of the things that you're interested in hearing more about. Um, if not, just continue to listen. We've got plenty of material, so don't worry about that too much. But um, any closing thoughts there, my bro, before we shut this bad boy down? Mate, just grateful for you, bro. Every chance I get to chat to you makes fills my heart with joy um love to the people out there always walk with your head up stand high stand tall work, work super hard um and if you get and, and and if you've got to do something just be good at it be great at it you know be the best you can be uh, i just yeah thankful so much for the opportunity to do this for for being able to front um and hopefully people are getting something out of it yeah, like, subscribe, share with your friends, get out there, reach out to us. Yeah, tell us what you need to, um, tell us what you're after, tell us what you need us to talk about or want us to talk about. Uh, we, we love feedback. It's how we grow and we learn. We're all about it at 2A. Eh? But, mm. mate, love to each and every one of our listeners, our followers, our viewers. Like, subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe team we apple you peer it's, it's something that's there you go <laughs> all right legends take it easy everybody we'll see you all again on the daily dmc so get there on the instagram account and we'll see you all again next week peace peace y'all